So it's 603, I'd like to open up the meeting. And uh, just wondering if there are any adjustments at all to the agenda. Yes. Michael? Yes. Oh, oh that okay. That doesn't look like Robin and silhouette there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sound like her either. I don't know if that'll help. Not really. Not really. It's the windows behind you. Maybe just turning your the laptop or computer, whatever you've got there. That's a little better. So um, outside of the treasurer, I was notified yesterday that um, there is some class four roads that have gates across them. Um, one is Hattie Bell Road. Yep. It starts down on here on Route 14. And yep. the other one is on the old Quarry Road. Um, really? Okay. Um, so, yes, it was brought to my attention by somebody who tried passing through, and there's gates on both of them. Um, so, okay. yeah. Because um, I'd love to have a gate on ours <laughs> if we're able Sorry, to. Sorry, you can't off. do that. Since That's we illegal. put so much money into our road. Um, but, yeah. 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 So okay, um, I, I'll check those out tomorrow. Um, those are definitely illegal. Um, there's also a gate or a cable across um, the far end of the old North Row, or not the old North Row, but the North. I did row. hear. Yeah. Yeah. I did hear um, about that. Been, also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll check it out. Um, Thank you. Where, where's the cable across the North Road? way out um just before you get to the cabot town line it's um it's actually oh, oh, it's yeah. it's so much of a, a old class road in fact um it's you hardly even know there's a road there now yeah, i but, know what you're talking about i know yeah, what you're talking yeah um those must be fairly new i would think those two gates from what I heard, yes, that they put down fresh grass and seed or hay and seed to, uh, to, um, yeah, to put, draw the line and then there's a fence. Okay. It's not our old friend, you know who. That I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'll find out. Anyway, um, so I have one other adjustment to the agenda. I forgot, neglected to put down um, under appointed and elected officials, uh, town constable. So I'd like to add that to that list. Um, any public comment at all? Okay. Um, so Brandy, for approving the bills to the town, when you get the, uh, you know, the warrants and the bills there, we'll come in and sign them, let us know. And as far as voting to approve them, we'll, we'll vote with our signature this, this week, whenever, whenever. So they're all set. Okay, Yeah. great. Okay. Um, so, um, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for the March twenty second, twenty twenty one select board meeting? Chris, no. Chris still moves. Okay, and I'll I'll second. All, all in favor? Say aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay. So those are those are done. Um, Diana or Robin, we're ready for the town clerk's report. Robin just got a, a dog license customer she's dealing with. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we can wait a bit. Yeah. It looks like Brandy's going to help her with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, nice. So, okay. So Robin's back. Yep. Okay. Brandy's doing my dog licenses for me. Since the last select board, and that's basically all I've done is dog licenses. Oh, We're up yeah. to 125 of them now registered. Wow. And I have, on a regular basis, been answering the phone now so I can get a feel of the questions that are coming in. Mm -hmm. And Kim Silk called and asked for any dogs that hadn't been registered as of last Friday. Was that the so deadline? I, last Friday. Well, the was deadline the was actually the first. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I did up a list for him, and I've got it hanging outside. He hasn't picked it up yet, but okay. it's ready for him. Okay, great. And that's about what I've been doing. Okay, yeah. Chasing dogs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Um, I can, I can uh, update you on the uh, special town meeting that's coming up. Okay. So we're we're getting that echo, Diana. So uh, maybe Rob, me, Robin, if you turn mind. yours mic off, that should do it. Okay. That's better. Okay. So um, we posted it in all the usual places and in the in the uh, Hardware Gazette and sent it out on Front Porch Forum, and we've had two requests for absentee ballots. Mm -hmm. Did you post anything on the website? The website, yes. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's on the okay. website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll probably put it on Trump Porch Forum again in another week or so. Uh-huh. Yeah. Remind folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else for all the uh, the uh, newspaper ads for the mowing and the uh, library roof. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Otherwise trying to clean up stuff and Robin and I spent some time this morning on the uh, uh, the uh, state um, voter registration mm -hmm. site, uh, teaching her some of the quirks and strange things that you have to deal with. Like all of a sudden there's a new road, North Hattie Bell Road, and somebody all on right. North Hattie Bell Road wants to register to vote, but mm -hmm. it's in the system because Skip has to give me all kinds of information on where it starts and ends and what direction it goes in and all that. So mm -hmm. that's just mm -hmm. fun things to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. So any any okay. So um, I guess we'll wait for. Could you let Brandy know that we're ready for the town treasurer's report? Okay. Yeah, Robin's gone back over to. Yeah, I, I can I can see behind you. I can sort of get a sense of what's going on down there. <laughs> Brandy. So, uh, Brandy Walls. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Diana, you should probably turn off your mic, please. Okay. Okay. So, um, a couple things. Um, so our payroll audit from VLCT came back. So we will be getting a refund, which is great um, because of the mild winter. I had over budgeted. Well, I didn't over budget, but it's an estimation. So we're getting money yeah, back from VLCT. Um, I ended up doing a $45,000 transfer today because um, there was a bunch of things. And you'll see them when you come in to sign on the warrant. Okay. Um, which I can I can grab the oh. just to give you a breakdown. Okay. So accounts payable today is fifty thousand five hundred twenty eight dollars and sixteen cents. Um, other income, I'm doing a delinquency deposit Ron had left on my in my bag in the in the vault. Uh, Diana also has a town clerk fees or, or, or income to the office that I have to do for a deposit. We also received in the meantime a check from the IRS um, stating a refund. Um, I had Tom, my assistant, come in. Uh, that was one of his things I had him look into. Mm -hmm. There was no overpayment on my part. Um, so he is still trying to um, be on hold and, and figure out with IRS, but his estimation is it's a COVID refund to the town, uh -huh. which was great. That was just a little over 2000. Um, other things. So Tom came in while I was gone. He did the reconciliation on the 941s. He did the uh, Department of Labor, the, um, the state deposit, he did bank recs and journal entries as far as the interest onto the money market and the checking account. Um, and you'll see those, I'll leave those um, for the board to view also. Okay. Um, other things. 
I think that's about it. Okay. All right. So yeah, I can't really ask you for a question since you guys haven't reviewed right. payroll and AP yet. Um, but yeah. Okay. Did, did you experience any of the wild, crazy weather while you were down south? Just as a kind of an aside to the whole. It was 85 business. the whole week. Uh-huh. Okay. It was, I was cold today. <laughs> <laughs> But it was really nice. It was the birds and the they're mowing their lawn already. But yeah, uh -huh. Uh. it was nice to see family. Yeah, yeah, sure it was. Yeah. Well, good. Well, good to have you back. Um, Thank you. And, and I saw your negative COVID report. That was good to see too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Chuck, looks like we're ready for the town hiring report. Okay. Well. <clears throat> I sent you emails about the grader. That's up and running, and everything's mm -hmm. going good. Yeah, seen it, seen it out at work here. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> You're supposed to change oil in it, and everything should be back to normal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, just to make, just to make sure that the and send an oil sample, and just to make sure it's all clean and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that'll be good. The speed limit signs up on East Hill are put up. Oh well. Okay. I haven't heard anything, any complaints either way. So okay. I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, and that's that's on Keen Farm Road, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Where it turns to class four. Yeah. Yeah, I know where that spot is. Yeah. Yeah, and the boys honed the county road last Monday. Then they went to the Cabot Road and added some stuff and honed it. And I guess they were back up there today putting some more mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. um, I was hoping Paul was going to be here. Because I'm starting to get after him about cleaning the intersections up. Okay. And Greg is pretty adamant that they usually do that with the fire trucks. Okay. So. Um, maybe I'll have Greg get in touch with Chance. Paul's away for the week, is my understanding. Okay. Well, I can get a hold of Chance as far as that goes, if you want. Okay. Yeah, I think I think he's kind of second in command there. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. And uh, just to get a head start on things. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not sure if I said anything last time or not. I guess they're doing some paving on Route 14 around Woodbury Lake this year. Yeah, they they should be a kind of a re resurfacing. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to add some to the. Um, apron on the end of East Hill. Yeah. Just how much. Yeah. And, yeah. and anything will help. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get it up there, car link, so they can get straightened out before they start spinning, it'd help. Yeah. Yeah. R Robin, did you have a question for Chuck? Yeah. When I just came up around the lake coming to the meeting, I noticed that somebody has spun it up, and there's about three stones in the middle of Route 14, about the size of baseballs. Oh, wow. Really? Yep. Okay. If they're still there, when I go back down, I'll pull over and get them out of the road. But they were there when I came up. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, they, I don't know if it was, yeah, I think it was today. They went to East Hill. So maybe uh, they just loosened them up and they got it rolled out there. I don't know. But yeah. um, I'm going to be talking to Greg in the morning. I'll have him check it. Okay. But, um, um, speaking speaking of East Hill, Chuck, I got an email from um, Mary Genjemi about um, up above their house, um, which is one of those houses right under the the bank as you first go up East Hill. Um, is that the, Bruce, Bruce uh, Tucker's old place? I think so. Yeah. 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 Anyway, but, um, up, above their house, off East Hill Road, there's. The water on the, the, I'll call it the south side of the road, has been um, creating a bit of a gully um, where it runs off the road just above their house. Um, so that, you know, it may take a little ditching or some something there to, to fix that in the in the somewhat near future. Okay. Sometime, this, sometime this summer, but. Um, well, uh, if there's water going down over, we'll see if we can get it stopped. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and back up Bruce Tucker's. 
I guess so. I, I'm not sure. It's um, you know where Bob Fair lives. Yeah, the next house. It's, it's the next house. Yeah. 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 I, I heard somebody bought it, but I don't. I didn't know who it was. Yeah. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, yeah, right. I'll talk to Greg tomorrow about it. Mm -hmm. I thinking I'm going to be back a week from this Thursday or Friday. So okay, great. Then we'll make a plan on getting it straightened out completely. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, um, what do you know about uh, the fire department in Washington the intersection? Did they used to do that? I have never heard of that. I've never seen them doing it, but um, maybe right down in the village, I bet they might have done that. Well, um, years ago, they used to do all the intersections, but I don't, uh -huh. know, I don't know. I don't know what the, I don't know what the deal is. That's why I was hoping. Okay. That. Well, in the past here, you know, like I live where Dog Pond Road hits onto Foster Hill Road, right where yeah. the pavement is, and I've. I haven't seen anybody there doing much at that intersection the last couple of years, but um, they used to have this kind of roller automatic brush, and they, they were kind of got that, but there's yeah. no water with it. And no, there's no water. Yeah, so yeah. they would they would try to clean it up that way. Well, uh, if they took the dump the old dump truck down to the water tank in it and sprayed it first, yeah. I think they probably could do it. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Um, Getting them boys to get out of the realm of things is a little tough sometimes. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, all right. So I'll call Chance and, and ask him, and then mm -hmm. we'll go from there. Yeah. And you know, Tim, Tim being on the road crew, he and the fire department also, he may know a little bit more about that too. But I, Chance, Chance, I think is the second in command. But. Yeah, I think he is too. Yeah. All right. All right, I'll give him a call. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's still early, so I guess if it was another week or two, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But right, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I asked Greg about the roads, and he says the roads are good in general; they're dried up. Some of them are kind mm -hmm. of rough, but yeah, yeah. It's amazing that, uh, of course, it's been pretty dry anyway here, so they have dried up. But and then there are these wet spots. Um, you know, where you'll go along the roads fine and then it's kind of really wet and gets, it is getting rutted up a bit now, um, but yeah. you can't really, it's still too wet and soft to grade it too. And Most of them are clay boils. There's clay under there with no way for the water to get out. Yeah, yeah. Them should be dug down into them, has some drainage put in them. Uh -huh. So the water could get out from under them and then it would dry up with the rest of the road. Yeah. But the, there the seems to be Yeah, the worst clay boil that I've, been seeing and it's there every every year is up by David and Susan Sawyer's house. Yes. Yeah. That one's always been bad. They yeah, they yeah. put drainage in that years ago, but I think it must be plugged up now. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to do something with that. I do, with the high drive and the schoolyard and every and the the yeah. parking lot for the town path. I get an idea that's about all the extras we'll get this year. You got a pretty long list for this summer already. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> and a pretty some pretty major projects too so. yeah yeah so, so what uh, we'll just one thing there. i one thing i wanted to ask you about with the the better roads grant um at the bottom of valley lake road in the village are you yeah. thinking that the road crew would do that work or did you want to try to to bid it out i haven't seen a plan of what the work is yet i okay. guess i'd like to see that before i Okay. If we could take it on or not. Right. I think I have, I have some paper copies of that. You do. And I think I have it digitally too. Um, I will look for it and um, send it down to you. If, if I do, I'll let you know yeah. one way or the other. Cause um, from what I've heard, there's plenty of gravel in there. There's, they say like it's five feet of gravel in there. So. Yeah. There's um, plenty of gravel. In fact, the part of the project is removing some of that gravel, but yeah, there's yeah. lots of gravel there. Well, and I would like to see that plan too, because with that schoolyard right there, that needs quite a lot more gravel, and that would yeah. be the ideal place to be putting it. Yep. So. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and like I say, I'll be home the end of next week. Okay. Uh, we probably, uh, as far as the schoolyard, we probably won't get started on that until after school's out. No, it would, wouldn't. It would. Yeah, it would be hard to do it when school's in session. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. 
Chuck, I wanted to let you know about a, um, a kind of a workshop, a webinar kind of thing about the municipal roads general permit. Yeah. Um, and I've signed up for it. A lot of it's the kind of technical, um, uh, you know, the reports and stuff that I'm still trying to figure out and learn. Um, <laughs> but um, you might be interested. It's, a, it's an hour and a half long. It's on um, Wednesday, April 28th. So I think you'd be back by then. Yeah. I could sign you up for it if you'd like me to. Um, and then I could send you the information about it. It's, um, let's see. Yeah, it's mostly um, one, one part of it is, is, you know, reassessing the road after the work has been done to, um, to make sure that it's been upgraded to the municipal roads general permit standards, which are pretty much, you know, the things that we've been talking about, the berms and the crown and everything else, um, right. which you right. would be familiar with. Um, yeah, I'd like to be signed up for it. Okay, I will sign you up for it. Um, and good. Okay, just want to let you know about that. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And 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 Chuck, I'm going to be there as well. Okay, great. Good. Good. Because I'm great. I'm part of the 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 V Trans like working group now. Uh huh. A select board member. So I'll I'll see you there. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Be good. It'd be good if we had a couple of us. Yeah. To take advantage yep. of it. Yep. And usually when they do those, they also record them. So we could, and we can request a recording. So um, could have it to refer to or, or whatever. Um, Paul would probably be interested in that too. I know he has a, a strong interest in the roads, but we'll see. He might, he might be busy. He might not be, but um, so at the town office right now um, is the certi certification for compliance for the um, state uh, codes and standards, the roads and bridge standards that um, that I think I sent copies of everyone to. It's a it's a yearly thing that we sign. Um, it basically allows us to get grant money, um, and it just states that we know what the codes are, and we're going to you know kind of when we do work on the roads, that that's the, that's the way, the work that we'll do. It's, yep. there's nothing, nothing new. I mean, I think Chuck, you probably, you know, have maybe even higher standards than, than they do, but, um, but the select board needs to sign off on it. Um, so I left it at the town office. Um, it's on the table there where the bills and things will be. And as soon as we get, um, you know, Chris, if you and I have signed off on it, that's a quorum. I can, um, I'll probably leave it there for Paul to sign when he's back next week, but I could scan it and send it in and, and then we're, we're good. We're good till the 1st of June anyway. So, um, so th it's, there's not an emergency to get it signed and in. Um, Thanks, Michael. I'll, yeah. I'll be in tomorrow um, okay. to sign documents. So okay. I'll take a look at it and it'll give me a minute to to have a look over it as well and understand okay. what I'm signing. So thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I can did I think I, I can send you those codes and standards if you didn't don't think you've got them, but I think I did send them to you. Uh, I'll take a look at, oh. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Chuck. Sorry. I wasn't sure which one he was talking to. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you did. You're in my other I, I, I know I sent them to you, Chuck. I probably sent them to you twice. But, yeah. but um I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, I'll I'll I get inundated by emails. So I probably. I have know to. you do. I know yeah, you. So no, don't I. Just take another look. Thanks. If you Mike. can't find, if you can't find it, let me know. Um, Thanks. Thanks. And then, so tomorrow, um, I have the two um, municipal highway grant applications pretty much finished. Uh, I'll be sending those in tomorrow. Um, the deadline, of course, is April fifteenth. So um, we'll make sure we get them in before that. And um, and that's. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much all I had for the town highway report. I can't think of anything else that anybody can think of. No, okay. I'm just gonna jump in really quick. Yeah. Um, Chuck and I talked about this briefly and Michael, I think you and I talked about it as well, mm -hmm. but I finally was able to get in touch with J.A. McDonald about okay. um, actually producing sort of the, the material that we would want for a long for a longer period. Swenson is happy to leave it up there, so that's good. Okay. Um, 
I'm waiting on a quote for what the what what what's going to what really we're going to pay for. Okay. Um, Swenson's going to donate the material, which mm -hmm. I think we kind of knew, but they guaranteed it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we're paying for the crushing costs. Okay. Uh, storage is not a big deal. So yeah. uh, we're in good shape for that. As soon as I get a quote, I'll let everybody know. So would McDonald go up there and crush it on site and we could store it up by the quarry? That's correct. Okay, great. There's a very impressive pile of crushed granite there right now. <laughs> yeah, you can actually yeah. see it see it from the Cabot Road. Yeah, you can. Um, Chris, yeah. Chris Davison told me we were welcome to help ourselves to that pile. He if did. We need them up there. Yeah, I agree. So, yep. Uh, so when I talked to Chris, um, he said, if anything that we want to use, we just go ahead and use. Okay. You know, we can take advantage of it right now, mm -hmm. which I think is actually really, really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we'll get, a, we'll get a quote for the longer term um, in terms of, you know, our, our goal of materials mm -hmm. and we'll store it there for the time being. That's great. You have to so. bring the loader up? No, no. They, they'll what? let us use your loader? They'll let us use gear, as far as I understand. Chuck, maybe you can answer this better than, than it, I can. Well, they're there. Um, eventually, we're going to have to take our loader up to load it. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yep. In the short term, we can use their we can use their equipment, um, or they will they will. Load load load. Yeah. Um, in the long term, when we have you know storage of that material there on site, it'll have to be our our equipment. I don't see where that's a big deal though. That loader can spend some time up there just as well as a can old downgrade. Right. I, I, I feel I feel like I feel I feel like we can, you know, as long as we have good storage capacity there and they're willing to do that. And you know, there will I when I talked to Chris and maybe Chuck can tell me more. Um, he you know, he was very helpful and Kevin Swenson was totally willing to let us leave material there for a long time. A relatively long period of time, I mean, mm -hmm. on, on the order of a couple of years, um, a few years. So I think that we don't want to take advantage of it too much, but at the same time, um, I, I think I think this can work out fairly well for us. Mm -hmm. I think it's Chuck? great. I, it would be really foolish not to take advantage of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think we're going to get it at a pretty darn good price um, because yeah. the material is free and the everything is up there already. So, you know, I'd, I'd rather crush more rather than less and pay for it. Um, but Turn Chuck, it. Me. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, if it's there, it's like money in the bank in a way. That's right. And, I, and I think it's going to be another decade or so before we see a crusher up there because they're not going to need another quarter road anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think that this is the time. Yeah. To, to, to pay into this. If yeah. We can. yeah, no, I agree. They they pretty much have a policy that they've shared with the town that they, you know, because we had asked them about the possibility of crushed granite in the past. And, and they said, you know, to keep the neighbors happy that they really, you know, don't really consider crushing anything up there. And the, of course, they needed it for that new road. So it made sense for them to do it. But yeah, they, they tend not to to want to do that there just because it is pretty pretty loud, I guess, when they're doing it. It, it is a bit noisy. Yeah, yeah. When you have houses nearby. So. Yep, yep. All right, that was the only thing I had to add. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Anything else about the town highways? Okay. Um, so moving on to the appointed and elected officials, um, let's just go, I have a couple new um, appointments that we can make. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit, we weren't quite sure what to do about the road foreman. So I thought maybe we would talk about that a little bit um, tonight, whether, you know, Chuck, whether we should appoint um, Greg or whether, you know, if that's something the select board should do, or if it's, you know, the road commissioner, um, so we'll talk about that a little bit. And then um, I I'd like to um, get, is Brandy still there or did she go home? Everybody's shaking their head, but I'm not quite sure that's a yes or a no. Oh, okay, good. Um, 
Randy, I wanted to talk about the auditors a little bit. Why, why don't we do that first? Um, so as of this moment, nobody has really come forward to be an auditor that we've had one person sort of asking about it. Um, and I, you know, I checked in with VLCT and some towns do not appoint auditors. They just hire a company to do the auditing once a year like we had planned on doing a few years back and we're kind of dropped it out of the budget when we got a, a kind of a, a budget surprise, I guess I'll call it. Um, so, and I know, um, I kind of wanted to get your opinion. I know chronically that, you know, we, we, it's been kind of hard to rely on most of the people that we've had as auditors, maybe with the exception of one person. Um, uh, no names mentioned. Um, so that is something that we could explore um, is actually just um, not worrying about appointing auditors and hiring an auditing firm to do a yearly audit. Wolcott does that. And I think um, when we were looking into that before, it cost them about $10,000 a year. No? It's 18,000 and that's locked in it for three years. Okay, ouch, all right. Yes, Diana. Well, there was one person who showed an interest and I emailed him the other day to see if he was still interested and because we needed to know whether to uh, keep looking for other people and uh, he told me he's interested. Okay, uh, but don't, doesn't a town need more than one? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then there was another person who Brandy was trying to get interested and then there was another one that I uh, is a friend of Chris's who uh, had shown an interest at one time. So I thought maybe okay. Chris would reach out to him. Okay, so we'll we'll just kind of be patient and see what happens with... If we could get those two, uh, John Reed was the one who said he was yeah. interested. And, and uh, the other possible one was Darren Yusinovitz, who is interested in doing something for the town. Um, okay, all right. So I'll jump in and say that I, I haven't been able to 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 sort of lock Darren down. I think that he would be great, yeah. um, but he also has a uh, brand new baby boy, and mm -hmm. I, I don't think this might be the exact time that he wants to take on uh, this role. Well, it wasn't a good time for him to be a select person, but I, the auditor job yeah. is much more, much less time and more flexible. So I was hoping I'm, you would consider I'm, that. I'm trying, Miss Diana, but uh, I have no guarantees there. Oh, okay. But may I, may I just just say one thing? Um, it seems like at some point it would be nice to invest in a professional audit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I know that Walkit Walk spends this money every year. I don't know if we're in that position. Um, I don't think we are. But I think that some regularity of a professional audit might um, be healthy for us to understand uh, how 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 we're how we're how we're working. Um, so maybe this is the moment when we go ahead and invest in that mm -hmm. for the future yeah. and sort of get the ball rolling. Maybe we decide that every three or five years is is reasonable. Maybe we don't need every year, um, but at least you know consider it. Um, so, I, but that's that's not a select person's opinion. That's just a that's a town. Well, talking. you are a select person, so. Yeah. But you know, we've had this conversation before, and and the select board in the past when we had the conversation, um, Brandy was a part of it. We were in agreement too that um, that the thing with doing it like every three or five years is that it tends to be a little bit more expensive, um, just because you know, the, the person the com who contracts for it or the company or whatever, it's a bit more work to come in and, and um, but you know, there's more that you get out of an audit than just making sure that uh, the dollars all line up is that they actually, you know, can suggest different uh, ways of accounting for things or, you know, they can, can be kind of advisory and trying to get you to, um, you know, make some changes that would make it easier or more transparent or, or whatever. Um, so, you know, I, I'm in agreement to that. And, and then um, in the past, we had a select board that was in agreement. 
Um, we actually had it written into our budget, um, but then we dropped it. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, let's. Um, we could continue this discussion uh, maybe when when Paul's here is here with us um, as a select board. Um, we do have um, there is a, a ten thousand dollar line item in the um, in the present budget for fiscal year twenty two that we won't be using um, for the we had budgeted ten thousand dollars for the library roof and and at this point the library is going to be paying for the roof so. I there is that. I think that came out of the budget before the town report. Oh, did it? Okay. All right. Well, so much for that scheme. Um, uh, I think yeah. So I think Chuck, I think Chuck was going to say something though. Okay. I, I heard him a minute ago. Uh, no, I'm trying to get my telephone ringer shut off, so you didn't. Have to... <laughs> okay. So you know, maybe this is something that we plan on for the next fiscal year. We can, would actually have some figures um, and could write it into the budget or we could look at the budget as it is now and see if there is some money somewhere that we could, um, that we could uh, take that from if we wanted to do it this year. When, when uh, Brandy traditionally is, a, is an audit done before the end of a fiscal year or towards the beginning of the new fiscal year of the old fiscal year? How, how's the scheduling go? I would love for somebody to come in and do it monthly so I'm not having to go back in time and remember exactly what I did or if I did something wrong by, uh -huh. by um, account entry or um, but typically the auditors don't come in until the end of the calendar year to get the town report completed um, mm -hmm. to send out to be printed. Mm -hmm. um, but okay. ideally I would love somebody in here for an hour, an hour a month to go through the select board orders, to go through bank recs. Um, so are you thinking yeah. that a town resident could do that? Oh, yeah. Audits, right? Professional audits would be done at the end of the fiscal year. Yes, that's my understanding. Yeah. So you're thinking that a role for a, a, you know, an auditor that's from the town, a town resident appointed a, a auditor, or actually they're elected, aren't they? But there were none to elect this year. Correct. So an elected auditor. Um, <laughs> they could come in monthly that that would be helpful. Um, all right. Staying on top of it, that way they're the, ahead of the game. Okay, yeah. Um, well, we could see if the one person who has expressed an interest so far, if, if that would be something that they could do. Skip, yes, you are being, a former auditor. Being a former auditor, yeah, you usually start in September and you, or, or, like last year, uh, we had, uh, I think a monthly wasn't, uh, didn't we do something every month, Randy, uh, to look at your books? And then at the end of the year, we put together a, uh, an auditor's report for the, for the town report. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I did talk to John Reed yeah. and he and I swapped a couple of emails. We had a couple of phone conversations. And I indicated to him that the way we've done it in the past in terms of auditing is that it gets busy around September, September, October, November to put together the town report. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Robin Durkee had been in with Brandy, I think most of last year, most of 2020, to do a, a cumulative report so that at the end of the year, we weren't scrambling around mm -hmm. uh, trying to get together the information for the report. Was that kind of on a monthly time basis that Brandy was kind of suggesting just now? I don't know if it was that structured. No. Uh, that would be something that Robin and Brandy could speak to. Mm -hmm. I know that Robin was in there a great deal of the time Mm -hmm. putting together a you know, comprehensive document that we utilized for our auditing report. Yeah. So for so. me, 
during tax season. So I get the tax bills out in August. So between August and November, it's hard for me to stop um, doing the taxes to individually look into providing information. Robin was very self-efficient um, and, and somebody with a financial background, you know, could run with it. Um, but for me, yeah, it's hard for me to to get pulled aside from doing deposits when the money is running in that good during that that window of a section from September to, to November. You know, Brandy, one thing that might be helpful for people who, who um, are thinking about being an auditor or if they become an auditor, if you could write up kind of a sort of a job description of, of what ideally you would like an auditor to, to be able to do um, to assist you um, and in that role. Um, that so, I, so in the, in, since we've had this transaction of nobody being in here, um, I've, I've combined it, skips a report to all the information that Robin has. So I do have a binder now um, okay. that is complete to review. I've, I've, the other person that was um, potentially interested, I did give it to them to review and I haven't mm -hmm. heard back yet. Okay. Um, so I don't want to give names until I'm 100% yeah. ready to. Uh... Yes, Skip. And I sent John Reed that information as well. Okay. We I know checklist from the League of Cities and Towns that we use as a template to do the auditing. Mm -hmm. You know, it encompasses all the financial transactions and also uh, things to do with listers and also uh, any other transactions within within the town as well. Okay. I know one of the concerns that John had is that he's often away that window of September, October, November, um, December. Yeah, he and I spoke about that as well. Okay. That yeah. was his main concern. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, I'm fully, you know, aware that he could do the job. Mm -hmm. You know, very confident that he could do a great job. However, it's just the timing on his part, I believe. Yeah. All right, well, I guess discussion to be continued. And um, but, the, but the good thing is, is there's yeah. an RFP for that, just so uh, happens, oh. if you wanted to go out for bid. Okay, that's right. For Well, that I guess we should, let's think about that some more. Um, $18,000 a year is a pretty hefty chunk of money for Woodbury to, to pay for an uh, auditing, a yearly audit. Um, but we could find, you know, we could get, do a little research and find some figures for like a three, every three years or, um, and then see if hopefully we would be able to find some residents that would be able to, you know, kind of fill in on a yearly basis in, in a, a less professional way. Um, so I guess we're still gonna figure that, try to figure this one out. Um, but, um, do you know? Do you know of some auditing contractors, Brandy? I know we 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 did do that RFP and we did get some bids back. Um, maybe just do you have that filed away somewhere? Yeah. Okay. Give me a second. Don't, don't worry about it right now. But well, I think Michael, the only one that responded was Sullivan and Powers. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. they were, right. I believe, Brandy. Correct me if I'm wrong. Eighteen grand or something like that. A they little over 18 time. grand locked in for three years. Yeah, yeah. I re I'm remembering that now. Um, yeah, and they do a lot of municipal audits. Um, I know, I think I can ask some folks at the um, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission if they might know of some other auditors. Um, so maybe I'll ask, but we could do a little uh, research into what, what that might cost the town. Just, just for our own information in this discussion. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, can I just ask, does anybody know sure. who Walkit Walk uses? I don't, we could find that out easy enough, but I don't know right off the top of my head. Well, because we share, we share, you know, a pretty important town boundary with Walkit. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, yeah. we could, and I know- Maybe we can leverage that in some way and, mm -hmm. and, and try to, consider whether or not I know there were two different towns I understand that part but yeah. um, I, I know when we were um, looking into this before this was three or four years ago um, Wolcott 
the the rate that they were paying whoever they were contracting with was quite a bit less than um, Sullivan and Powers by maybe five or six thousand dollars. But they were doing it on a yearly basis, so it, it did make it a little bit cheaper. So it does drop once the system once the, we're in their system. Whoever does the auditing, it's a it's a clean sweep um, as far as so they do drop it down in cost mm -hmm. once you're in there. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of work when you come in, right? Having never seen anything, and um, no. okay, well, we'll we'll keep it on the agenda. Kind of keep. Um, I'll, I can get a hold of the person from Wolcott and maybe find out who that might be and, um, and then see if there's some other auditing firms besides Sullivan and Powers that, um, that might be able to do this, have some municipal experience. Um, and we can see who, who we can, uh, whose earlobe we can twist to drag into the town office. <laughs> So um, any, any, anything else about the auditing or the auditors for now? We'll, so um, I know at our last meeting, there was some questions about the town constable, which I no longer have. I would be, um, you know, I'd like us to consider um, appointing Gary Clark uh, to continue as our town constable. Um, and there's a woman uh, named Becky Browning who has come forward to be the Woodbury representative to Central Vermont Fiber. Um, um, and let's see. And then, as far as the road foreman, Chuck, if you want to talk a little bit more about that, or we could, you could think about it some more. We could do that at another meeting. Um, I, uh, I've, my only concern is, is about the winter time without having one. I mean- well, Yeah, no, I think we should have one. I agree, we should have one. Um, and I'm, and you know, I didn't know if you wanted to talk to Greg about that first or, you know, I'm, I'm Greg has always been who I consider the road foreman. I'm fine with us, um, if you're okay with that, you know, appointing him as our road foreman um, for, the, for the coming year. Um, we could see how Chris feels about that. Um, you know, um, we may. Yeah, uh, I don't have a problem with it, I guess. All right. And, you know, maybe we should wait until Paul's here. He might have some thoughts on that, um, on that appointment too. But, you know, if we don't appoint Greg, I'm not really sure who we can appoint. Um, who's presently well, the only on our... thing we can do is hold off to see, see who the third man is or hire. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But. You know as well as I do, there's going to be some hard feelings there if we appoint somebody else. Yes, I do. And I worry a little bit about, you know, um, road crew morale a little bit. Um, so, well, yeah. you're going to have to worry about that anyway. I know. I'm worried about it already. I know it's, there are issues. So, yeah. um, so Chris, um, how do you feel about, um, appointing um, Greg Parker as the road foreman. We, I mean, we could do that this evening. We could wait till our next meeting when Paul's here so that all three of us can talk about it with Chuck. Um, well, I'd, I'd love to hear Paul's opinion, but um, I mean, I think I said this at our last meeting is that it seemed like this is a transitional period and mm -hmm. this would be the ideal job for mm -hmm. Greg to, to take. Mm -hmm. um, it makes the potential for him to you know, be hired in that position even better mm -hmm. if he well, rises to that occasion. And I think he's capable of it. Um, and it also makes the general transition to this sort of change in structure pretty, mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah. Um, so I actually think that this was, this is sort of the ideal configuration okay. as right. we sort of move forward. Okay. Um, I don't think it's permanent necessarily. I think it still has to be advertised for. Um, just to make it well, a well, wait a minute. I think record. we're thinking about two different things here. Hmm. Oh, all right, sorry, Chuck. Greg's been the road foreman right along, he has, yeah. So, yeah. this is appointing him to be road foreman, and then we're going to have to uh, advertise to hire a third person. Yeah, so my, yeah. my question was, do you want to hire Greg as a road foreman, or do you want to see? 
who you hire for a third person. Mm -hmm. I, I would think, um, you know, going forward, by the time we actually do that hire, we're going to be pretty well into summertime. Um, so it, it, and you know, the work kind of is summer work is pretty much beginning um, right now, or as soon as you get back, um, you know, once the, once the roads are through their, their mud season phase. Um, so, um, I mean, I would be fine with appointing Greg this evening. I would be fine with waiting until Paul is here um, at our next meeting. And, and in, in some ways, I think that Paul would probably appreciate being part of that discussion. I don't, I don't know, you know. I think he probably would too. Yeah, so why don't, let, let's wait uh, till our next meeting. Right, let's hold off, that's fine. Foreman. So, um, and Chuck, I, I, I agree with the way that you've described this. What I was saying is that with that new hire, the structure is probably going to change. And I'm hoping it does. Yeah, and we have to be we have to be willing to to work with that you know potential new structure. But I think for the time being, this is the right this is the right approach. That's that's sort of where I was coming from. Right, but I agree. And uh, uh, Chris, two different you know? two different things going on here. Chris, oh, sorry, Miss Diane. Commissioner is, I mean, the road foreman is just a one-year appointment. Right. So, yeah. Thanks, Miss Diane. Yeah. Okay, so what I, the people that I would like to appoint um, this evening are um, Gary Clark as the town constable and Becky Browning as the Woodbury representative to Central Vermont Fiber. Um, so do I hear a, a motion to that effect to appoint those two folks to the positions I just mentioned? We'll make a motion to approve on okay. both cases. And I guess I'm the second person, so I'll second it. And then, so all those in favor, I say aye. 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 Okay, so Gary Clark has uh, been reappointed as the town constable and um, Becky Browning is the Woodbury rep. Um, to CV Fiber. Um, I don't know if any of you, um, have, there was a great article in seven days this past week um, about these municipal entities of different towns um, grouping together to form a communication municipality. Um, and uh, that's definitely, I think that's probably the only way that we're gonna get high-speed internet out to the back roads. Go ahead, Skip. Just as an aside, if Becky needs any information, any background information, okay. I can certainly forward that to her. All right. And I'm still on the email list server for Central Vermont Fiber. And they've been awarded $22 million mm -hmm. to build out their fiber network. Yep. Yeah. So, so it'll be, you know, it'd be really good to have somebody from Woodbury there. That's uh, a significant help, amount of money. Helping the money get passed around to everybody. Sure. Yeah, so I'll, I'll um, send Becky your uh, email address, Skip, just um, and have her get in touch with you. Is okay. that okay? Right. Sure. Okay. Fine. Right. Okay. Um, so I did advertise other empty positions, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, um, but we still have no one to the Solid Waste Management District as a rep from Woodbury. Um, I didn't hear any response about an assistant to the select board, uh, what, which what Laura Daly did in the past. Um, and I didn't hear um, anything about um, an energy coordinator either. Um, so I probably will do another posting on um, Front Porch Forum and, and see. There were actually two people that were interested in the CV fiber thing. So I'm, I kind of teased the one who chose not to be um, the CV fiber person if they were interested in garbage too. So let's see. We'll see. Um, okay, so um, anything else about elected or appointed officials? Anybody, we're good there? Okay, so um, the emergency generator. Um, and actually, uh, Skip, um, well, he just, he just jumped out. So uh, three, would you like us to, to take up the, uh, review of the community values mapping report so that you don't have to hang in here for another 
20 minutes or half an hour? Whatever you feel, Michael, I think that Kirkfield Services contract would really be exciting, you know. Okay. Well, it, 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 it actually was kind of exciting for a while there. <laughs> I remember. Uh, okay. All right. Well, um, let's see. You're scheduled uh, 720. Okay. We'll be, we'll be there by then. Oh, sure. Don't worry about it. All right. So three weeks ago, um, when we had that windstorm, I think there was some even snow, which is hard to believe now, but um, the power went off um, in town. Pretty much it was power was off here. It was off in Hardwick. Um, and the automatic switch that kicks on the generator to the school uh, when the power goes off did kick on. However, there wasn't enough cooling fluid in the radiator to the motor for the generator. Um, so the automatic switch automatically shut everything down. And so there was no power to the school. Children were there in session. So it was kind of a, wasn't so great with our emergency generator. It's one once in a lifetime chance to actually function and nothing happened. Um, so I, I did talk to Larry Eldred about that, or he, we emailed back and forth, I guess. Um, and he filled me in on what actually happened then. Um, and it, was, it wasn't the automatic switch that didn't work. It's the fact that um, there was a low fluid in the radiator. Um, and the Brookfield services did get out there in about an hour or so and, and got things going again. Um, um, but one of the things, one of the questions it brings up to me is, um, and I did talk to Larry a little bit about this too, is that, you know, we usually, we have a yearly contract that we sign with them. Um, and uh, we usually always, there's two options that we have. There's a once a year service um, and there's a semi-annual service. Um, and of course the, the once a year is cheaper and that's what we've always gone with. Um, However, this probably wouldn't have happened if we did do the semi-annual service. Um, and the difference isn't all that much. Oh, hang on, somebody's wanting to join. Um, could, could I, the person that I just admitted on the phone, could you identify yourself? Uh, you have to press star six to be able to speak. I don't want to be Washington DC. Um, so this is for the person that I just admitted to the meeting, um, on the, you're on the phone ending your phone number ends with eight, eight, two. Could you press star six to open up the phone line so that you can identify who you are? Yes, this is Kaki Peltz. Okay. Thank you, Kaki. Okay. You're welcome. Um, so I, you know, so I asked Larry, you know, Larry mentioned to me that, um, they had always back when the school district um, was, was the one overseeing the generator that they had the twice a year, the semi-annual, um, service, which the annual service is, um, about, I think it's $900, $927. And they, Semi-annual or twice a year visit is, is a $1,442. Um, so Larry definitely recommends um, the twice a year service. I could bring up on the screen if, you would, if you'd like um, what's done um, for the annual and the semi-annual um, if, if, if we wanna review that. But, and we don't have to make a decision tonight, but I'm, I would like to advocate that we change the contract um, to a twice a year or semi-annual contract, just so that a little glitch, like not enough fluid in the radiator um, isn't gonna shut us down when we actually need the building for an emergency shelter. And, you know, if Brookfield services, if it was a major statewide emergency, they wouldn't be able to get there. And, um, you know, we, we might be counting on a generator that isn't functioning. Um, um, so we don't have to make a decision tonight. Um, I could bring that up if we want to just quickly look at um, the difference between a, a, an annual or a semi-annual service. Um, 
I have what, it on the. Let me just ask really quickly: the vintage of that generator is what? Do we have a sense of how old that is? Uh, I think it's about. I don't know. I think it's twenty years old or twenty-five years old. So it's it's uh, well past its useful life. I don't think so. Um, um, I don't know the answer to that. That would be something I could ask that of the Brookfield service I, people. I, I think we should before we okay. before we uh, embrace a new uh, contract. Let's okay. make sure that we're not just working on a generator that is prone to potential failure. Okay, it's right, it's right by the um, it's 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 right by the plowed part of the mm -hmm. parking lot. It sees more salt than most generators would, would do and sand. And I know that, well, it's, it's, not, it's not the newest version of a generator. Right. Um, and as a backup, it's probably not in the best place. Uh -huh. So let's make sure that we're, we're investing in something that actually is gonna be functional. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I completely advocate for the semi-annual contract, the okay. more frequent inspection of it yeah um, because so, this is not just a school it's a community building right exactly yeah so does okay. anybody know does anybody know if they run a, a pressure test to check out the generator to see why the antifreeze was gone well the the fire department before the um the automatic switch was put in which was that was put in about a year ago um they used to do, at least in the MOU um, with this for the generator, they would do a weekly check, a weekly run of the system to make sure it was working. And apparently with, with the automatic switch in there, they stopped doing that. Um, right, but what I'm saying is there's a reason that antifreeze is gone. And you should at least have that, somebody run a, a, a pressure check on that cooling system to see if there's a leak and where it is. And that will determine quite a lot about whether you ought to be putting money into that generator or going a different route. Okay, so that's another question I can ask Brookfield Services. Um, <clears throat> because if it happens to be a head gasket and it's either burning it or putting it in the oil, uh -huh. that's sort of like uh, feeding a dead horse. Yeah, that's major, um, okay. So um, I will give them a call and um, try to get a hold of a technician to ask them questions about the generator. So right now I have, um, uh, how old is it? What kind of shape is it in? Um, is there some type of pressure check or do they, I would imagine when they do their servicing that they definitely do a pressure check on the, the system, well, but I'll ask probably, them about Probably about depends that. on if the antifreeze is low or not. Mm -hmm. If the antifreeze yeah. is low, I would hope they did a pressure test. Okay. If it, if it was up full, they might not. Right. But okay. as far as um, you could get a hold of Brian Shatney and have him go and put a pressure test on it, all it is is gauge and okay. wait it out to, to make sure that, you know, if there's an external leak, we'll start seeing antifreeze running. If it's an internal leak and the pressure goes down, you won't see it, but you'll know there's a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, on this preventative maintenance list that they have, um, there's, let's see, they have um, check cooling system level. They do that both, you know, anytime they come, clean and flush the cooling system. That's a whole separate quote. So that would be a special maintenance project. Um, and check thermostat operation, check engine jacket coolant heater. Um, Stuff like that, so. Um, well, if it's been a year and it's got a coolant heater on it, it could have just evaporated. It's, yeah. yeah, I was gonna agree with Chuck. It could have just gone away. Yeah, so yes, Brandy. So when I last took, talked with Chance and with Brookfield, um, mm -hmm. the only person that has a set of keys to the maintenance of the generator is the school. The, the, yeah. the fire department no longer has a key. The town doesn't have a key. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing I did tell them that that um, if there is stuff that the town or 
the fire department can check annually or, or monthly that they get a set of keys and, um, and they're able to do it. So Brookfield was willing to do a run through of stuff that they can check. Um, but I think it's necessary that the town and the fire department at least have a set of keys, not just the school. Right. For this. So with, with this, with this kind of um, checking, would it be like the maintenance person at the school that would be the main person responsible for that or uh, the fire department would, the, you know, we, of course, we don't have anybody we could check with the fire department. They used to do a, a fairly consistent check of the generator um, and now now they aren't. So, um, And for us, uh, and there it goes with the, the school and the, and the town and, right. um, but, but the fire department meet every Tuesday or every Wednesday and, and for them to just set it on their schedule of checking it, um, it's, I think it's worth it. Okay, well, that's what used to be. That's the way it used to be in the old MOU right. that they would check it weekly. Um, right. Well, let's. Uh, we'll talk to the. Uh, see if the fire department wants to do that. And Brookfield would. My understanding of your communication with Brookfield is that they would come out. A technician would come out and kind of just show us, show yes. the people responsible what to look for. Yeah. Okay. That way, it's not just one person trying to track down that if. if somebody from the town, somebody from the fire department, just mm -hmm. as many people that, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, I think, yeah, I think that sounds like a good thing to do. Um, uh, maybe I'll, I'll um, I'm gonna call them to talk about the generator itself. I can maybe try to set that up or maybe talk to Chance first, um, make sure that the fire department is still willing to do that. Donnie's okay. not willing to do that? What's that? Donnie, the school, the janitor is not willing to do that. I'm sure that he would be. Um, and I think it would be, be good for us to have, um, you know, if someone from the fire department, I think would also be um, to know what to look for just in case. Um, I think it would be a great thing, but on yeah. the other hand, he's right there every day. I mean, it, it puts it on his schedule of things to do. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, if there is something that the, you know the fire department had agreed in the past to do a weekly check of it um oh yeah sure yeah, so I, so if I, they were still willing to do that um because it the generator also goes to the fire station um oh oh so, i didn't know that yeah and we and we have talked about also having it go to the town hall right so um yeah yeah so we'll we'll just kind of try to reconfigure what's going to happen with that um and yeah. if, if there is this little training yes yeah, skip a couple of things. Number one, I have a generator as well. And you can, in the newer generators, to go to, to Chris's comment, on the newer generators, you can routine those. You can set them up to routine weekly or twice a month, things like that. It's not just, you know, like monthly or, or something like that. It's, it, it's very, it's, you can set them up as often as you want. Mm -hmm. And secondly, why does the school have responsibility for that generator? Well, I think they would prefer not to. Um, well, if, um, I can myself. remember going, you know, going back to the Wayback Machine when we found out that we do own the school property, mm -hmm. and the school property also encompassed the generator. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering why, all of a sudden, the school has the, the only set of keys to that generator. It just, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I think that's just the way it was set up who knows how many years ago, you know, and it's just been that way. I, I was surprised that the fire department didn't have any keys to it. Yeah, uh, me too, because they, every Tuesday, they, they used to run they were a doing manual the testing. routine. They used yeah. to throw the switch, you know, the manual switch and routine that yeah. weekly on Tuesday nights. Yeah, been, it seems like there's been a lot of moving parts in the last, I don't know, um, yeah. especially five years. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Especially with, with the merger. With um, the merger. You know, it's, and, but it would be, especially because this is, a, yeah, I, I just wanted to think about this as an investment in the future. And I don't right. see why the town office couldn't take advantage of a system um, that is associated with this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, before we, 
you know, sign a new contract, whether it's annual or not. I, th I think it's worth considering whether or not we're, we're dealing with a, an updated system. Um, things have come a long way in the last 20 years. So do you think that that emergency generator could service the town office a couple, three miles down the road? I do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that something that the town clerk and town treasurer would be interested in is having that emergency generator hooked up to the town office? I think, did you mean the town hall, Chris? Because oh, that town was hall. Mentioned. I'm sorry. Because oh, the town hall is used office? as a- I apologize. Yeah, the town office is down the hill here from me. The town oh. hall is right in the village. And that's designated, let's say there was an emergency and the children had to leave the school. Right, I was talking about the town hall. I'm sorry, okay. sorry. not the okay. town yeah. hall. Okay, yeah, no, that's that's in the-, the office would have should... to be independent of this. Right, no, the, the town hall, we've talked about that and, and I, I would like us to do that. It would be very easy to do. Um, and you know, it often if, if there was an emergency and the fire department, you know, they have the power to the fire station, um, and off that well, town it's our hall. Only, it's our only designated shelter in place facility. Right. The school. For our entire town. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like this should be something that we understand really well. Okay. Um, All right. Not just for the, you know, for the school, but for for the, mm -hmm. for the town hall as well. Yeah. Um, and the and so the school. The school is the school is designated as the town's emergency shelter. That's correct. Um, and then the town hall is is has been designated. I don't even know if the school knows this or not. But if let's say there was a fire in the school or um, something happened to the school and the children needed to leave and needed a place to be, the town hall is designated as the place that they would go. Right. It's a um, secondary refuge. Yeah. And so I feel like we should define these things fairly well, mm -hmm. and we should also make sure that our system is working. Mm -hmm. which is not. So, I agree. Um, yeah. I think that this is a worthwhile endeavor. Mm -hmm. um, I'm biased, obviously, because I have kids in that school, but. Right. No, it, you know, I, I, I agree 100%. Robin. Ms. Durkee has. Yes, the town does, the school does know that that is a backup okay. because they have a key to the town hall and they also do fire evacuation training okay. down to there. Oh, good, good. So. That brings up another concern I have, Robin. You know that little footbridge over the Kingsbury branch? Yes. Do you know who built that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sounds like Chuck does. <laughs> well, I was one of them that put it in. It was okay. a part of it. Some of, the, some of the boards on that are starting to look kind of rotten. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm thinking maybe um, we should take a look at that and... and uh, I, would think all, I would think all the wood must be getting pretty rotten. Yeah, yeah. The, so, the underpinning is railroad irons. Yeah, the, those railroad ties will last forever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they're there. Yeah. But yeah, the wood is definitely looking looking kind of old. So yeah. something sorry, else. May, may I ask you, gentlemen, or um, everybody, is that something that we could get a grant for within our... Um, our, I'm sorry, I don't know the name, but our Woodbury Conservation Commission group. Um, oh, you mean the Woodbury Fund? The fund, yes. Yeah. yes uh, maybe. I yeah. mean, it is, a, it is something that we use and yeah. keep walking over it. Yep. And people who walk from the hockey rink to yep. the post office on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's something that we use all year round. Mm -hmm. Seems like it's a worthwhile investment. Yeah, so, no, it is a worthwhile investment. Um, yeah, we could um, we could inquire of the committee on the Woodbury Fund if that's something that that they might uh, consider um, funding for. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Michael. Okay, I know who to ask that question of, so I can do that. Um, so, um, so yeah, that was a tangent on the we were talking about the than generators still. So, so um, I'll check in with Brookfield Services about the, the quality of the generator itself, um, just, um, and uh, 
maybe see if we could schedule a, a time. And I think it would be good for the town to take on the responsibility of either by having a, a semi-annual contract with Brookfield or having people from the fire department um, meet with Brookfield services to have an understanding of what they could do if something didn't work or what to check for as far as a weekly or a, every other weekly uh, run of the system to make sure that everything's working. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, I th it sounds like we should just try to figure out how to, what to do to make sure that what happened three weeks ago doesn't happen again. Um, uh, can I say yeah. something? Sure. Yep. For the for the climate that that generator is in, you sure really should be doing the biannual. Okay. Well, that's what Larry said too. Just because of the moisture factor and all that, and with that block heater in there, keeping that up to 160 degrees, so it'll start with no problem. That's probably where the evaporation came from in your in your uh, okay. antifreeze. Yep. <clears throat> well, I'm. I'm hearing a consensus on the semi-annual, but if there's, if there, um, and then maybe just having some town knowledge of troubleshooting that, that oh, um, absolutely. machine uh, yeah. too would be good. Yeah. Somebody should understand it pretty good. Yeah, okay. And I think- uh, Can I ask they, a quick question of- Sure, yes. Uh, um, yep. Where's the tank? Where's the tank for that? It's buried in the ground right there where the, the generator is. to it? Yeah. yeah. But behind it it's just behind it on the yeah. downslope side uh no almost directly behind it i think it's part of that bank that drops okay. down from where the yeah. generator is to the ball field and do we dip that tank or is that tank isolated uh that tank um i would imagine that they're the maintenance of that and, and the upkeep of its condition is re the responsibility of the people that own the tank um, I'm blanking out on who we actually have service uh, the propane to that brandy probably. See, that's a propane tank. That's not diesel fuel. Oh, it's yeah. not diesel. It's no, it's propane. It's propane. Yeah. And we're now set. We're set for an annual um, or semi-annual uh, fill up of that tank, um, and it's basically owned by whoever we have the contract for for the propane. Which brandy does know who that is. I can't remember. I do. We recently had it filled and it's Suburban. 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 It's Suburban's tank, so we can't go with any other vendor. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ms. Brandy. Yep. yep. Um, I just want another quick question. And sure. actually, this is for Mrs. Durkee. Um, yeah. is, is there a reason that we should consider having a backup generator for the town office separate? Diana, yeah, your mic is. When the power goes out, we need to go home, so I don't really see why that would be a good investment. Okay. <laughs> we also have flashlights for the vault in case somebody's in there working and then the power goes out, we have flashlights for them. Okay. So it sounds like what we should be focusing on for our investment is where we have our fire facilities and our shelter facility in our school yep I and agree. Like a worthwhile and that's the focus of our investment um yes yep. do, i just like to hear miss miss diana and ms robin tell me that does that sound like where we should be focused are with our funds Well, yeah. one thing about having the generator here or a generator here you wouldn't have to worry about messing up your backup on your computers but we have we have uh what do you call it <laughs> automatic backup compressors and batteries and things we've never had a problem with losing anything we do mm -hmm. sometimes have to reboot you have diana you have uninterrupted power supplies that's what it <laughs> is okay yeah ups okay. is that'll uh I think the uh, rating on that is for something like four hours. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's just you know a small battery. Is okay. Uh, I appreciate it, Skip. Thank you. I'm I'm just trying to understand whether or not we need to be thinking about other things. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks very much. Okay. Anything else on the generator? I'll I'll have some um, answers to questions. We'll have it on the agenda at our next meeting. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. Next thing on the agenda is um, the Woodbury Village um, proposal from the Woodbury Gardening Committee. So Khaki's here, and I know Diana's part of that. So um, do you want to just go over that briefly? I think um, it's been shared with um, the rest of the select board members also with what the thoughts are behind that. Kaki has to uh, connect herself again. So, Kaki, you have to press star six on your phone. And that should unmute you. Okay, there you go. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, I'm not going to go. I don't have the proposal in front of me. I'm out of town. Um, oh. But I figured that you all had that. So, yes. um, yeah, and you have it, Diana. So, um, if there are any questions, uh, I'm not going to go over it. It's pretty self-explanatory if you've read it. Um, it, it the, the, the gardening committee is a pretty ad hoc group of local people who have done some um, uh, work to keep the flowers blooming in uh, the village and wanted to um, increase uh, some of those kinds of uh, you know, uh, visuals in the town. So, so uh, they asked me to put together a proposal and I did. And, um, and we'll uh, see how you feel about that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not going to. Yeah. So that's, that's what happened, how it came to be. Okay. Um, and yeah, thanks. Backwards. I, you know, I personally think it would be nice. Um, and it's just, it's a couple of cedar planters that you're thinking of to put in the island. Um, that's my understanding of the proposal. And then stuff to put in the planters, of course, and with a total of a $620 as kind of a proposed uh, cost. Um, and I'm sure we can find the money somewhere um, for that. So I, I would have, um, definitely approve this proposal myself. Um, and I would also approve this proposal. I think it's it's lovely. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that would be great. We have a lot of, uh, we have a few volunteers who are willing to put in them the energy to, um, uh, to get it set up and filled up and planted and watered throughout the summer. And, um, and then next year, uh, we'll figure out a way to um, uh, get some more donations, maybe to, to to continue to plant it. I mean, that was that's the, obviously, if it works out, and we hopefully it will, because we're going to try to be on it. So we'll see how um, how it works. But. So I just have one question about the six foot planters. Is that going to kind of work? With the uh, tr the trees that are planted there and the flagpole in the middle, it'll work okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. We went down. Patty and uh, another member and myself went down and measured all of that, and okay. um, so we've we've taken that into um, account, and mm -hmm. we aren't digging down into the median. We're going to have it raised right. about six inches off the median. So. Um, we want it to be profuse bloom, beautiful woodberry. <laughs> right. Sounds good. Something that would be uh, pleasing and, and mm -hmm. kind of just a jolt of um, color and, and interest that hasn't been there um, for a while. So mm -hmm. yeah. that's, uh, that was our, that's our goal. Okay. Robin, did you have a question? Yes. Kaki, what is it pressure treated that the planners are going to be made out of? No, I think that that Patty Garbeck was pricing cedar, but I don't know if she's, she may do larch, which is also a, a wood that could withstand. Um, so no, I, I would say no, she's not using pressure treater treated. I, well, but the reason I, why I I'm for that. The reason why I'm asking is, is it gonna withhold, is this gonna withhold the sand and the salt from the roads? I, I would hope it would be yeah. removed in the wintertime. These, these are- Where are you gonna store them? 
Do yeah, you're not going to be able to remove them. Think, yeah. Uh, oh, you're not going to remove them. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, we'll see how they hold up, I guess. Well, that, yeah. Um, they're too, they're too big and they're all the dirt. Inside. I mean, it would be really a, a major, you know, where do we put them? We'd have to have something, somebody come in, pick them up with the dirt put them back, you know, maybe alongside oh. the town hall or, you know, I, so okay. I think we wanted to try to, maybe they get covered, you know, and then attractively, you know, so that, um, I don't know, but I mean, if you want us to find that out, uh, we can try to do that. Uh, I don't think that we need to worry about that. We'll just see, um, see what happens. Um, and uh, maybe covering would be, something that we could do a couple of cheap plastic tarps or something um but um so we'll we'll talk to patty more specifically about the wood and, okay and, well, and, i know and, at, at pnr lumber you can get five quarter tamarack um yes yeah. yes yeah. i've got that yeah the, the thinner stuff tends does tend to warp a little bit um okay so okay so that's that's a good tip, and we'll talk to Patty about that. Um, okay. But that should last a while, you know. So mm -hmm. um, at that point, we would probably have people just like clamoring. From, <laughs> I don't know how. So, oh, we can't lose those. We want them. Well, hopefully, we can get this to to, to blossom and okay. um, be pleasing. So yeah. yes, Diana. And the uh, owner of the other former Woodbury Village store has said we can get water from there. Great. Oh, that's nice. Yep. Yeah. Because otherwise Great. there's no water. Great. Unless we Great. go into the town hall and get bucket, you know, one jug at a time. <laughs> yeah, well, I usually bring buckets down um, and, and it, it's, it's a juggle, but I, I can do it. But, um, that's great news. Thank you for checking into that. And because um, we hopefully you're going to talk about uh, painting the town hall this year, we thought maybe uh, it wouldn't be a good time to fill that particular planter. The one on the town hall steps. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I've kind of forgotten about that we we're thinking we paint the town hall, but um, I'll put it on next time, next week's agenda or next meeting's agenda. Um, Anything, anything else about um, some flower boxes on the in the village? All set. So um, I guess the select board should vote to approve this uh, proposal. Um, do I hear a motion to that effect? Chris Codius moves to approve. Okay, and Michael will second. Um, all those in favor, uh, say aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. So good. We'll look forward to that. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, we'll Thank get you to work you. when we when we can. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank we'll you, let Mr. you know Nelson. what how how Thank it's you. coming. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Kaki, I I have an idea that I have wanted to explore with you. So I'll give you a call sometime soon. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. okay. Super. All right. Okay. We'll we'll be. Be back in town in a, in a week. Okay. Okay. I'll call you Thanks. when you get back in town. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Chris, you had wanted to um, just talk a little bit more about the uh, community values mapping a report that that was presented to the planning commission um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so, I'm going to give you the screen, and Skip is here to also, um, you know to talk about it, so um, all yours. All right, so um, my, con my, my simple concerns, uh, which I, I thought that it was a wonderful report. My simple concerns were related to understanding what the different drainages were actually doing within the town of Woodbury, at least the the town of Woodbury along Route 14, which is a very different drainage system than exists along uh, the Brownsville Road and sort of up towards Walcott and Elmore. 
Um, so when we're thinking about this community values mapping, where are we focused? And Skip, maybe you can help me with this. I'm not exactly sure what part of town we're focused on. I mean. Sure, well, we're focused on every part of town, not okay. just exclusively or along the Route 14 corridor. Uh, if you want, I have the readout from the community values mapping session that I could share that would demonstrate you know, the, in, the entirety of Woodbury and you know, the parts of Woodbury that the four teams deemed most, uh, uh, most worthy of, of identifying, if that's something you might wanna do. But in terms of drainage, I don't believe we got into any, any aspect of drainage. It was, let me just, can I, Michael, can I share my screen? Yeah, let, let, me, um, let me get you set up to share the screen here. Hang on a second. Um, sure. So I'm gonna make you a co-host. Um, let's see, how come? Uh, let's see, how come it's not letting me do that? Uh, maybe because I'm not the host, I'm a co-host myself. Um, hey, Michael, I just stepped in and-, and Okay, yeah. thank you, Leif. Thank you. Thanks, Leif. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So to answer Chris's question, uh, this is what we focused on that the groups identified. They were, you know, values amongst the group. And they, the full list of values that we focused on, you know, are recreation, hunting, fishing, scenic, community, working landscape, historic, and ecological. There wasn't anything that we were instructed to do in terms of, you know, drainage or anything to do with the aquifer in, in, in Woodbury. It was more what's most important to us and what do we want to preserve as we move forward with the town plan. There is a component, oh, go ahead, Skip. Go ahead, go ahead, Michael. I'm sorry, go ahead. So there is a component of the town plan that deals with flood resiliency. I, was your concern mostly with the, the village and the fact that it, Woodbury Village, and the fact that, you know, we have the Buck Lake drainage and then the, you know, Greenwood Lake, you know, those just, there's a lot of water that kind of convenes on the village itself. Um, and the fact that the village is kind of sitting, um, kind of a sitting duck as it's been known to flood in the past. Um, so, but there is, there is I a- I, have, I guess I had two concerns. Um, yeah. The first is, is you're correct, Michael. Um, I had a concern about understanding flood resiliency. Mm -hmm. um, which seems to be part of community and working landscape for me uh -huh. when, when we think about these things. Um, right. If you're dealing with a community and the town center is in an active floodplain that floods on a fairly regular basis yeah. because it is built along a floodplain in Kingsbury yeah. Branch. It's, it's actually not designated as a floodplain though, it, Inter it, interestingly it, enough. It is depending on which order you look at. Okay. Yeah. If you look at the hundred year, mm -hmm. well into that floodplain, which is what um, everybody uses for insurance purposes in the model. Right. Yeah. So it is, and this didn't pay attention to that. So that, <laughs> which is okay. I'm fine with that. Well, my other concern this... was that one of the other aspects of our community is that we all drink groundwater or many of us drink groundwater. Many of us have wells. Mm -hmm. And the interaction between surface water and groundwater was something that was entirely absent from this, which is disconnected from what the state is doing on its general surveys of what we're sort of operating with for groundwater access. Right. We engaged the state with a mapping project um, in 2014. And subsequent to that, we had a groundwater study that was done by the state mm -hmm. in 2014 or 2015. I might be wrong about those dates. Um, 
it seems in some way that this should be integrated. We have lots of state-based data um, that isn't part of this. And it's not a fault of this committee in any way at all. And, and Skip, if, if you think I'm being accusatory, I, I hope you, I hope you, I hope you're not. Oh, no, no. I, you know, I understand where you're going with that. There's other data, there's other data that we can use to um, really push us forward in really making this project robust. That's, I think, where I'm coming from. Skip, I'm sorry. I, I get that, Chris. We were charged, and I just put it up on, on my screen. The two things we were charged with for this exercise, what places in Woodbury do you love? And secondly, what yeah. do you value about these places? Um, that was it. Your, your concerns are valid. And I could bring that up to the Regional Planning Commission and make sure that they're addressed in the town plan that's ongoing. No, I think that that would be really useful because I personally value um, clean drinking water. Oh, sure. Yeah. Everyone has yeah. a well, I know. And we all have and, wells, right? We all have sure. septic systems that are um, potentially misused or disabused or antiquated, right? I mean, these are all things that it's not just the stuff we see. Right. It's the stuff that actually impacts our life and livelihood mm -hmm. that I think this well, should be kind of integrated with. Um, so if I, yeah, could I ask mean, you, if I could ask you a favor, Chris, to yeah, kind please. of encapsulate what you just said and send it, send it to me in an email. I'd love to, I'll, no problem. Skip, and I'll push, I'll push that right along to the Regional Planning Commission and make sure it gets included in our town plan. Thank you, Skip. I, I certainly you. will. I understand you're concerned and, you know, I've only lived here for 26 years. So, you know, I've seen that the town flood a lot and, you know, we've done a lot to mitigate that, I think, with the old store finally being removed. But I think there's more that we can do. There is more that we can do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. And so yeah. I think that, that that highlights my concerns. So I, I think, um, you know, Chris, for the town plan, you know, there is a flood resiliency component to it. That's a required component and definitely taking a look at the village um, and the situation there will, will definitely be a part of that, that it'll be a, an important part of it really. Um, and then maybe some other time, um, uh, you know, I, with my role at the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission as a commissioner, I've sat in on meetings um, for both the Winooski uh, River Basin Plan and, and now the Lamoille River Basin Plan. Um, and um, there was a, I, I won't go into it anymore, but I'll share with you, you know, the state is really looking at the phosphorus levels and, and not much else as, you know, with their concern for Lake Champlain with these rivers. And there was a kind of an ad hoc committee, advisory committee that was formed by the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission that really came down on them for other chemical contaminants and for groundwater issues, the same thing, issues that you're bringing up. Um, I won't go into that right now, but maybe um, I will call you as a non-select board member and just share <laughs> some of the, <laughs> some of that conversation because um, um, they really, they brought one of the basin plan uh, folks to, uh, you know, really kind of put the screws to them that they were kind of just looking at this one issue when there's many, many other issues to worry about. Thanks, so, Michael. Anyway, I appreciate, enough of I that. appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so this, you know, you know, my understanding of this exercise, Chris, was just what those two things that, that Skip mentioned to you it was a play. It was a way for to get residents involved in the initial planning. It was hosted by Fish and Wildlife, and it was more just to kind of pick out places that people really value in in the town um, and why. Um, it, you know, they're getting into other more kind of critical, um, pragmatic issues that that was not really a part of this exercise. Um, so, but what you bring up is important. I absolutely understand. Yeah. Um, I, I, I certainly understand that. And my concern is that sometimes we don't see 
the forest through the trees. Exactly. And mm -hmm. we, um, as folks who maybe can be a little bit more informed based on our background or our knowledge or our local, mm -hmm. you know, community mm -hmm. efforts, um, can inform this. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how these surveys are developed. Mm -hmm. Um, so feedback to them based on things that are lost mm -hmm. in this, I, I think is useful. Yeah. Um, we have a great community and we can inform beyond our community based on what we know. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to lose track of that. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we would love some of your knowledge and energy in this part of the town plan that you're concerned about. We would invite <laughs> you to, to help us out. I'm sure Skip would agree to that. I, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. We're really trying to make this town plan relevant to the town of Woodbury and not just kind of a postcard of Vermont that um, uh, yep. kind yeah. of... Yeah, I have to be honest, Skip is the one who motivated me to think about these things because, you know, we are not a one size fits all state. We're a very diverse state. Right. In terms of our landscape, mm -hmm. um, in terms of the way that our landscape is used. And we're somewhat unique, actually. We are. In we're our an state. outlier, at least. We are an outlier. An outlier. And we should be paying attention to those things. Mm hmm well, I think the Planning Commission is in total agreement with that thought. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. I'm happy to contribute. Skip, thanks for thank the opportunity you. to speak. Michael, thank you. Sure. Uh, Chuck, did you have a comment? Yeah. Do you need me for anything else? You know, I don't think we do. Okay. I think I'm going to sign in. I just had company come. Okay. Thanks for being here. And uh, we we'll look Chuck. forward to seeing you about town here soon. Yeah, real soon. Okay. Thank you both. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Have a All safe right. trip home. Thank you. Yep. So um, next on the agenda, just a brief. Um, um, Excuse uh, me, Michael. Like to, yes. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to sign off. Okay. Well. Thank you, Skip, for being right. here. Yep. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good, yep. good to see everyone. Yep. Thanks, Skip. Yeah. Good night. So um, recently the. Um, town went through um, uh, kind of an emergency health order um, situation with landlord and tenant thing. And um, initially we had to call upon um, Jay Copping, the Callis health officer to um, help us out. I'm, you know, as a select board chair, I'm the default health officer because we don't have one. Um, and I felt totally inadequate to, without any training, to actually do this inspection um, for um, uh, health issues. So Jay, um, I asked Jay if he would help me out and he agreed to do that. Um, this is the second time that he's been involved in a pretty uh, not so pleasant situation in the town of Woodbury in his capacity as a health officer. Um, the first one was a couple of years ago that I became aware of. Um, but I would like to be able to offer him a small financial stipend for the time that he put into, um, you know, spending the hour and a half, almost two hours for the inspection um, and then doing up the initial report um, from that inspection. Um, he's, you know, graciously done it and says that he doesn't, um, need a, a stipend, but he would, wouldn't would um, throw it in the wastebasket if it came his way. So I was just thinking that maybe we could give him a $50 stipend for coming and um, helping the town out, um, and me especially, um, for, um, you know, um, for this problem that the town basically had to address. Um, that's all I, you know, I just wanted to make that proposal to the to the select board, um, and and I would support. I would certainly support that. All right. His information has been sort of critical in mm -hmm. understanding what is mm -hmm. what is actually going on in, mm -hmm. in this location. Yeah. So in this case, I would certainly support something okay. like that. 
Oh. And I feel pretty, pretty sure that Paul, um, Paul will also be in agreement to this. It's, it's kind of a, it's a small amount. Um, so um, I guess what I'd like to, I, I'll make the motion, even though the chair isn't supposed to, um, somebody can give us a demerit or I would just like to I would make a motion to approve okay. um, Jay having a small stipend. Okay, $50. good, good. $50, okay. Um, so I would second that. Um, all those in favor, um, say aye. 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 Okay. okay, so um, I guess we'll let Brandy know to um, cut a check and I'll find out his mailing address. Um, I'll send him a check. And a thank you. Yeah, um, I think actually the thank you note is probably worth more than the fifty. It bucks. is, and I've I've already thanked him many times over in emails, but um, yeah. Um, just some clarity about the situation was really helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just a couple of quick updates. Um, the, the the RFP for the library roof has gone out, um, and. Uh, There'll be a site visit at the at the library on April 23rd, Friday morning, um, for the folks interested in in, in uh, bidding for that um, project. And I think the bids are due back at the town um, office on May 5th, if I remember right. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, and then we are in the process of um, creating a notice of violation uh, for the zoning ordinance on a junk um, junk car, junk in general issue. Um, it's in the works. Hopefully it'll get done this week and then and we can actually uh, mail it to the to the folks. Um, and so that's pretty much just a couple of quick updates. Um, Michael, once we once that is done, um, do we have something that will be part of standing for town records that shows what our protocols actually are for defining these? Seemed like those yes. protocols um, were, were well, um, at at the present we're we're working from one uh, clause in our in the present zoning ordinance. That's that's all all that really exists at the moment as in in the zoning ordinance um, that addresses. Um, junk cars or other trash, et cetera. Um, we do have a draft junk ordinance that's sitting on the website. We were kind of waiting for the pandemic to pass so that um, we could actually have some hearings so that, uh, cause there, I think there are people on, you know, that can be an issue that there are two sets of opinions for and against, uh, and we wanted to give people a chance to, be able to vet those in something other than a Zoom meeting. Um, but that would address this issue much more thoroughly. Um, it's like a, a 15 page document, uh, basically um, on a VLCT model template um, and also working from the town of Wolcott that has, has recently used that template um, in the last few years to create a zoning ordinance. Um, I use both the template and the Wolcott um, zoning ordinance to form the, the Woodbury one um, that we have. Um, and that was pretty much inspired by a different situation in town. Um, so, um, and um, in this particular instance, we've also incorporated or um, asked for help from the Agency of Natural Resources. They have an enforcement and compliance division that addresses these issues also. Um, and they are, they have been actively involved at this site. Um, but we've been pushed by um, at least one town resident and, and actually the neighbors in this area um, where this uh, violation is, is occurring um, to try to, to have the town do something about it. So um, this is what we're, this is, you know, what we can do at, at, the, at the present moment, um, working with that one clause in the zoning ordinance and have been working with our town lawyer, uh, Michael Tyrant. Um, and he, you know, there's a scenario that he's mapped out for me that the, we'll submit the letter, um, notice of violation or NOV as it's called um, to this property owner. Um, 
sending it both certified and, re and regular mail. They have a certain number of days to respond to address the situation. Um, there's also, they have the, uh, um, they can go through a hearing before the Zoning Board of Adjustment um, to appeal this uh, notice of violation. Um, and then the, the Zoning Board of Adjustment would pass judgment on the, the notice of violation. And um, depending, the, so the Zoning Board of Adjustment can either throw the thing out as irrelevant or they can um, add to it or um, just to validate the notice of violation, um, in which case there would again be uh, some, a time period of compliance from the property owner. We could add on fines. Um, that would be something that the zoning uh, board could, could uh, look into. Um, there's nothing in the zoning ordinance about fining or these other steps that go beyond this. Um, but what ultimately would happen if there's no compliance, we would pass on the notice of violation and the fact of non-compliance to the Washington County Superior Court. And they would be the ones that would um, um, carry it from there. It would, be, it would be kind of out of our hands. So that's the long-term thing um, for this situation. Um, um, Thank you, Michael. That's yeah. great clarity. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, and I have, you know, I, I'm not going to say any more. I'm not going to express my opinion about what probably will happen. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens, but um, yeah, so it, it could be a long dragged out thing um, and with no compliance at all. That That's definitely a possibility. Um, but it, it would be good and you know this junk ordinance there are people that are saying you know it's my property i can do whatever i want um there are people that are really upset about other places in town where you know things just kind of look like hell i guess i'll say um and the junk violation would would help with that and it would be um but it's something that the town needs to debate i think discuss and, and either modify the present draft or um or approve of it and um, so that's something for the future and um, or it's kind of just waiting um, for us to be able to get together as a a body and and, uh, and i i strongly agree with that, that yeah this is a conversation that needs to be had as a community mm -hmm. um and part of it is a visibility issue but yep. part of it is you know um i'm sorry i'm always worried about water just, yeah it is it is a water issue too what i do for a living um, yep. Just worry about what's happening in rock and water. So mm -hmm. yep. um, do worry about what's happening in in, in our water and yep. our in, in our soils and our substrate. So um, yep. a couple uh, of the, of the sites that have been into question in the past that um, the A and R has been dealing with are directly uh, within the vicinity of either a major. Uh, waterway as a brook running through the town or uh, as a major lake. Um, so yeah, definitely. Uh, so there are some concerns in here and we have yes. to come together as a town to decide those things. Mm -hmm. This is an isolated issue. I, I have no, you know, uh, this is one thing, but I think yeah. that as a town, it's uh, as soon as we can, right. the time to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And Woodbury is not alone with these problems. And I think about every town has to deal with it, so. Okay, so um, the personnel policy, um, it's almost eight o'clock. I'm just wondering if people have the energy to do a quick review of the feedback we got back from Jill Muir. We can save this for another time. We could review it on our own. Um, I was, um, I just wanna feel out those of us who are still here, um, what our energy level is at the moment. Um, we could go through it pretty quickly. Um, um, one of the thoughts I had was to actually see if I could arrange a phone meeting with Jill to go over some of her suggestions. Um, and then we could try to do this um, with a less full agenda, maybe at our next select board meeting. We're, but I know the select board is kind of wanting to get this 
pretty much done before we start the process of hiring a third full-time road crew member so that we actually have a an updated personnel policy that can be part of the, um, the hiring process. So, and we're pretty much there as far as the information that uh, a hiree would, would wanna be able to, to see. Um, so we could just give them a rough draft, but. Um, uh, so this is Chris, and I would just okay. say that um, I, I would like Paul to be part of this conversation. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, we're only a select board of three. Right. It's pretty, um, <laughs> pretty small. Um, it is, yeah. And so yeah, I like definitely Paul feel it when one person it. isn't here. And I'd also um, like to make sure that we all had time to review any comments. Okay. Yeah. Uh, her her so comments are- obviously had time to, to review. Okay, all right. And I haven't had much time either. Her comments are pretty brief and, some of them are brief enough that I'm not really quite sure what she, what the meaning was behind the comment, so which is maybe, why I was hoping to maybe, maybe have a, a conversation would be, yeah, would, would be really useful yeah. before we move forward with this. But so I'd, let's, like to, I'd like to hear from Miss Diana um, and Mrs. Durkee. Are you all comfortable with us waiting on this? I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna have us push this back a bit. I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't expect anything much is going to change. It would affect us. So we just there, want there, there is actually a little bit, you know, and I don't yeah, think yeah. I've sent, yeah. I don't think I've sent um, Jill's um, comments to anybody at the town office. So I will do that tomorrow. Um, there are some things that uh, she mentions about elected officials and how they are addressed in the, uh, in the uh, personnel policy. So, um, okay. And I'll make sure that Brandy gets it too. Um, yes, please. Because I actually think that you all are part of this. Um, yeah, you definitely are. Yeah. And her comments. Yeah. Address that. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just don't, I don't okay. think it's a conversation that we're ready to have yet until we all okay. have a look at it. I, I feel, would feel better that way too. And okay. it is eight o'clock and I would love to to not be spending 20 minutes on this right now. So yeah, I'd be great with that. I'm gonna go try to read some books to my kids, so. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> Fill up. Okay. Good. Um, not supposed to be, but I can hear them over there, so. Okay, they're, they're waiting. <laughs> impatiently or impatiently, I'm not sure. Impatiently, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's usually the case with a, a young children. Um, so I, I forgot to put other business on the agenda, but if there is any other business um, other than adjourning, um, anything else that um, I don't hear anything at all. So um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Chris makes a motion to adjourn. Okay, and Michael seconds it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good night, everybody. Thank you all very much. Okay.